So I have one to our chaos value working group meeting on November 22nd, 2019. I just shared the Google Doc. So on the one thing that I have for today is finishing the social currency metric system proposal. Okay. Um, and I, I worked with Samantha and Dylan yesterday on uh, resolving the comments from last time. I'll share my screen to facilitate the conversation. Uh, is there anything else we should add to the agenda? Uh, one more thing I have to ask is like, um, uh, we discuss on the job market metric, which is our most like ready. So what is a way or procedure to put it on the GitHub? Like do I have to create an issue or link to a Google Doc or I just wanted a procedure for that? Okay. Um, maybe it becomes clear when we talk through the social currency metric okay. system, and if not, we'll address that after. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then I think we're good to go. Okay, let me share my screen. So, can you see this pull request? Yes. So last time we had left here with this version. Um, oh, I wish it had. File. So this is what the description and the objective looked like before. So you can see it was a lot. And from the discussion, this was the one thing that we needed to change. All the other changes were small and we had already done them during the call. And so now when we look at the current version of the pull request, it fits on one page. So we, I'll merge the pull request now. Is that okay? Can you squash merge it? Please, because there are a lot of small um, items. I'll do, I'll do that after our call. Sure. Um, and then we also have, we also added this uh, diagram here to show the process of the social currency metric system. Um, are there any questions about this metric? Uh, like uh, in the last discussion, we had a detailed things like uh, these are the issues that needs to be addressed. All yeah. of them are addressed. Yep, I crossed them all off when we addressed them. Okay, I that's fine. Then. Yeah. Do you want time to go through and make sure that there's nothing else? Mm, yes, we can go through that. Okay, so the description, so that the metric is the social currency metric system. The question is how does one measure the value of community interactions and accurately gauge trust within a community as evident from qualitative sentiment? And so the social currency metric system is an aggregate or composite metric. The social currency or social capital is a social scientific theory it broadly considers how human interactions build relationships and trust in a community. Interpersonal relationships are the social fabrics of communities. This is shown in the Levinger's relationship model and the social penetration theory. Community members' sense of personal and group identity grows as they interact. Members build shared values, accumulate a sense of trust, encourage cooperation, and garner reciprocity through acts of self-disclosure. These interactions build 
an increased and measurable sense of connection. The measure of these characteristics is called social currency. The social currency metric system is a way to sort through a fire hose of qualitative data from community interactions. A central premise of this approach is that community members' interactions have an impact on the community. The social currency metric system continually measures the sentiment from those interactions. It illustrates the reputation and level of trust between community members and leaders. Hi, Samantha. Samantha just joined. Yep. Hello. Can you hear me? Hey, Samantha. Ah, it works. <laughs> well, we're just now going through our work um, that we did and the improvements. Yeah, um, terribly sorry I was late. Uh, it seems I've been having some trouble getting on and the Catalina update was not great. <laughs> oh yeah, I did that a couple weeks ago. So right now we, I just uh, read out the description. Um, Andy, I know you weren't there last time because you were on a flight. So yes. I suspect this is all new to you. Do you have any questions on this? Uh, well, I wasn't there last week, but um, we have chatted about this, and and so roughly, uh, I think I've got an idea about what you're getting at here. Okay. Um, roughly, as in rough enough to make it a chaos metric, or is there any details or specifics that we need to fix? Well. Um, <clears throat> I think it, it it ought to be a metric. I mean, there's a lot of material here. And um, I'm curious. OK, so the idea of like sentiment analysis or, or trying to put uh, attach a number to sort of intangibles or, you know, kind of work interaction, things of that nature, I think is really cool. And, um, and you know, from there, I think probably you know, at some point somebody would bubble that up and say, oh, like, like what is the business value of that? And there's, there's going to be business value, that's for sure, in terms of brand and in terms of team effectiveness. Yeah. So to me, that sounds awesome. Um, I'm curious about the, inter about the implementation. Okay, we'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, Vinod, I know you were there last time. Yes. Um, this description compared to what we had before. Yeah way better it's like more of a descriptive than a marketing that was the main concern okay excellent and then so the objectives then are to analyze the qualitative comments in community interactions gain an overview of sentiment in a community get metrics that show at a glance how community is and was doing use lead metrics from continuous measurements for proactive community strategy development and to instill trust in community members that their thoughts and opinions are valued. Okay. So those are all things we can do. And this is to your business value. Um, I think this starts to hint at what is possible. And then you can talk to Samantha who has a business running on top of implementing this for people. That's great. So how do we actually implement this? First, you set up a data collection platform of your choice as described in a section below. Uh, you want to ensure it has a minimum of four dimensions and three communication channels. Once it is set up, the following method is used to collect, analyze, and interpret results. And this is the circle of collect, standardize, analyze, share, benchmark, and repeat. And so each of these steps are described here in broad strokes for collect communication traces you want to identify online platforms that your community is communicating on set up data funnels from those primary platform to your social currency metric system tool the critical data for the system is user generated content then we have standardized how communication traces 
should be assessed. You use a codex to define important concepts as a tracking keyword or category in the focal community. This unified codex of terms ensures consistent analysis as different people read and tag community sentiment. Formalizing the revision and addition structure to this codex on a regular basis is a must. Then we get to analyze the communication traces. Here we take the community sentiment, analyze it in the social currency metric system tool by tagging data with codex terms. If the tagging is done by a team of people, it is recommended that everyone gets together regularly to discuss trends and ensure consistent tag use. However, if the tagging is done by an artificial intelligence algorithm, then a human team should supervise and retrain the AI as necessary. Uh, Georg, one suggestion yeah. like on the standard formatting in each of the like uh, points one, two, three, you have used the bullets separately. I don't see the need of the bullets in the points because it's just one. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm happy because to. Yeah, because there is no other like two or three bullets in each section so there's no need of these points yeah i'm happy to remove that i must say i'm really happy to hear that the only issue you've had so far has been one of four <laughs> yeah <laughs> um Georg and Dylan did so much work on this last night and they did a really good job. So yeah, now this feels like a proposed metric. So here, how about this? We just merge it all together in. Yeah, that's fine. And I will commit this. Oh, you're right. It looks so much better and it actually fits on one page with the diagram now. Okay. Maybe so in the you, previous version you had a bullets. That's why now the bullets are gone. So. Yeah. so after we do the tagging, we share and visualize the aggregated analysis. We visualize in a dashboard the quantitative count of codex terms over time. This is where the qualitative analysis results produce an easy to observe dashboard of trends. Share analysis with team members. Uh, one question. So are we uh, at this stage, are we connecting the data with the system that Samantha or Dylan has developed or it, so I'm, I'm reading it from a, just a metric perspective. So do I need to develop a dashboard to analyze it? I just need to visualize it, right? My understanding is you can use whatever tools fits your purpose. If you want to use Excel. Yeah, that's why it's like, so just, maybe visualize it not a dashboard in a dashboard that's where my uh, hinge was are there any other sentiment analysis tools that are being used within chaos now this one is the first is there any way that this could be implemented within Grimoire or um or you know another tool that uh, Augur. or Augur. Yes, we can implement it. Um, as I was uh, talking with Samantha and Dylan yesterday, um, the question is who wants to implement it. So if we have someone in the community that would like to do it, great. Um, for our Grimoire Lab. Petrugia could implement it, but as a business, we would need someone who is willing to put money on the table for it. Uh, maybe there's just like a, a sentiment analysis service that we could, you know, apply to pull request comments or to issue comments. So um, the system, as far as implementation goes, we've built the system in Airtable, in Google um, Sheets, in Google Data Studio. Um, we've built it in Smart Sheets. But as far as like larger sentiment analysis platforms go, um, we've looked at MaxQDA and at Tagit 
and at, um, what was the name? Medallia. Um, so Medallia is like a net promoter score kind of company, but they include a whole bunch of other features. And we were able to implement it perfectly fine in those three systems. The thing about that is MaxQDA and Medallia are both proprietary. And Taget, I believe, is relatively early on in open source um, development. Uh, yeah, my comment was on point four was just to have a visualize the quantitative count of uh, codex terms as okay. a matter. That's so, what, like. Uh, yeah, we can do that. And then when you go down here to visualizations, you can see what it could look like. Yes. Okay. I'm fine with that, Samantha. So the, um, the main reason we use the term dashboard is just because that is all around a general term that's used in my industry. Um, so if it doesn't really work outside of the marketing industry, that's totally fine by us. Uh, like uh, discussing on the, I know uh, like I'm very familiar with the dashboard uh, term and like I can very well sense it, but since we are developing a standardized metric for everyone to adopt in any situation, that's where I was proposing like, uh, are we limiting a user to a standardized dashboard or yeah, maybe an example of a dashboard will be fine. I like that edit. I think that that edit definitely captures that yes. sentiment. And um, I definitely agree with you that we don't really want to pigeonhole people into specific visualizations of the data. Um, right. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay. So I put, for example, on a dashboard at the end. Yes. Okay. Good point. Thank you. So visualize the quantitative count of codex terms over time, for example, in a dashboard. Okay. Then we have benchmark, set goals, and predict future growth. After getting enough data to form a benchmark, take stock of where your community stands. What are its strengths and weaknesses? What actions can be taken to make the community healthier and more robust? Then form community initiatives with well-defined goals and execute on these projects to affect the social currency metrics for next week. Repeat the process in regular evaluation meetings, discuss the shortcomings of the data set or collection methods. Come up with methods to address these shortcomings in the future. Work solutions into the system and move forward. Truth is in the trend, power is in the pattern. There are several filters by which we can analyze this data. We can analyze it by channel and sort it by where the data was coming from. We can so filter it by tag and show data based on what codex tags were used to identify sentiment and comments. We can filter it by time to show trends in data over time and pull specific data sets. We can filter by most impactful comments. This is by sorting and filtering by flags that can be placed in the data to highlight specific data points and explain their importance. AI versus human tag, filter by whether tags were applied programmatically or by a person. And we can also have a weighted currency where weight is the importance of certain comments based on any one individually selected criteria. Uh, cannot at the moment support more than one weighted metric by design. A resulting weighted view is simply a reorder of information based on weight. Um, do we need this parentheses, Samantha? I would not be able to explain to people what it means. So the concept that I'm trying to get across here is if you start modifying the data based on what you, the person in power in the community, um, think is important, it defeats the purpose of the system. 
But it's also really important to be able to do that because you know your company best. Um, so Dylan and I spent like days trying to determine whether or not it would be a good idea to offer multidimensional weighted currency. And we couldn't find a way to offer that feature and also not completely undermine um, the system. So we wanted to just add that caveat to essentially say, yes, this is a feature, but um, it's limited on purpose so that you can't break the system unintentionally. Okay. I don't know if that's really honestly necessary for you, but I think that that's pretty crucial information. Yeah, but it says already here on any one individually selected criteria, it already says we cannot have multiple. Yeah. Uh, I would remove it. See all the things we can still put an X to. Mm -hmm. After yeah, because anything. Yeah, we figured out how to create multidimensional weights in uh, Airtable, uh, Google Data Studio, and Max QDA, but we couldn't figure out how to do that without undermining the concept of what we're trying to achieve. So, yeah. no, that's, that makes sense. Okay, visualizations. Here's a sample of a dashboard. Here's an example of how to tag it and have a, a pivot table show the values. And then we have here a expanded comment view where you can really focus in on one specific comment. And then down here we have this section we spend a lot of time on last time um, with regards to how do you set up the tool, how do you do the data tagging, what is the data in the spreadsheet, how do we describe it, and so on. So that's all implementation details. Data collection strategy is forward. You just pull in the trace data. Um, one thing to consider is the legal and regulatory limitations of how long you can retain the data. So Andy, now that we went through the implementation section, what do you think? Georg, what is trace data? Trace data is data that is produced accidentally, like when you write an email and it's stored in an archive. Your purpose was not to create archive data. Your purpose was to convey a message and the trace of that interaction with someone, that is the trace data. I do want to clarify that um, trace data is basically data that's left behind, but the system it would be more apt, and this is the mark you're speaking, to say passively produced data, um, basically just data that people are creating in passing as they communicate, rather than actively being requested. So if someone submits a survey, for instance, um, that is actively provided data. But if it's a passive thing where it's just in a script or in a support ticket, um, that is sentiment that was acquired passively. Yeah, the uh, other words that I've heard that are kind of similar are tacit, as in tacit knowledge, and, and ambient, as in, you know, just sort of like ambient light or ambient temperature. Okay. I definitely would steer away from ambient because that suggests that we're collecting data from around an area instead of exclusively from one person. Um, it seems to me that that would suggest five people around a given data point rather than one person's sentiment. That's what it sounds like to me though, but. That sounds fine. I mean, the vocabulary is really uh, interesting when you're trying to figure out how to sort of define and explain. Uh, so as an outsider, it would be really handy to, to know what exactly are the data sources that you're thinking about. You know, to say, is it email, is it, is it tweets, is it? Um, you know, so I can answer it, that, what, what I can answer that very short and then we can go into it a little bit more if you really want to. Uh, Georg and I have had a lot of discussions about that. Um, data sources are going to be very community specific. And with the social currency metric system, we have found 
that the larger and more public the data, the more difficult it is to integrate it with the SCMS. So Facebook has a ton of integration issues, for instance. But if you consider a more private platform like vanilla forums or a higher logic or discourse forum, um, that becomes very easy for you to pull in. Um, I recommend at a bare minimum uh, integrating it with your support system um, so that you can port uh, customer facing um, issues in like support tickets and um, comments, reviews. Um, another way that people have used it uh, is by pulling in Google reviews, uh, Yelp reviews, various different bits of third party review systems. Uh, so they, they can easily process through those reviews and that data to find uh, potential improvements. Internal to a community, I recommend um, making sure that any of your internal communication with those communities is being monitored. If your community is like a bulletin board system, for instance, just doing like a random poll of comments every once in a while, um, or creating a system where administrators can um, say, okay, this comment was important, that will go into the system. Ultimately, it depends on how granular you wanna get with it because the system doesn't really have a limit on granularity. Okay, so data collection strategies, I think where your question should be answered, Andy. It's a good question. It, it is, and, and I have maybe one other sort of suggestion and that is um, for people in the chaos community, it'd be, it'd be helpful to identify which of these things already exist within Greenmore and within Augur. So, you know, if there's just data that's there off the shelf that you don't have to go out and, and custom generate, it seems to me that would grease the skids for people to um, apply this. It might be a good idea to um, attach a few blogs of uh, implementation cases uh, that are internal to Grimoire Lab, uh, where you can basically be like, so yeah, we were collecting this data. Here's how you can connect it using this API. I think that would be a really great blog post. I don't know. So we have been removing those detailed implementation details from our metrics because we want them to be general applicable, yeah, yeah, okay. not specific to uh, specific tools. Makes sense. Yeah. So, so that may not necessarily belong here, but I definitely think if you want to provide that resource, we're more than happy to write that out for you. I'm happy to co-author a blog post maybe, because one thing that I was thinking is we should advertise this metric and we could write on opensource.com or some other big blog with thousands of readers um, about what this metric is, what it does, why to use it. Hey, it's now chaos approved. <laughs> and here are tools that you can use. And if you want any help, call Samantha and Dylan. So yeah. Let's uh, put a pin on that. And then here I just proposed to add trace data can be collected from a community's collaboration platforms where members write comments, including ticketing systems, code review comments, emailing lists, uh, code reviews, email lists, instant messaging, social media, and fora. Yes, no, agreed. Agreed. Um, okay, so Andy, when you're ready, if you could uh, squash merge it, because 40 commits is a lot. I'll do it after we wrap up. Excellent, thank you. And it's just a click of a button, right? You don't have to go into Git and do it manually or anything. Mm -hmm. Just making sure because I, I've talked to an engineer who's been using Git for years and he didn't know that you could squash it within the GitHub user interface. I actually didn't know that either. So, so if you want to just click the button, then it's all done. That's great. I don't want to merge my own. Okay. 
All right, I'll do it. Okay. Samantha, it's happening. The metric is being merged. I am very excited about this, actually. Um, I'm really happy to see this happen. Yeah. Merged, the status just changed. <laughs> okay. You should send me a screenshot of that. I will send you a screenshot. Yeah. OK. I took a screenshot. I'll send it to you after the call. Ah, so much work. It's good to see it come to fruition. Oh, while we're on it, I had another uh, pull request to add a funding button here at the top. Um, so if you agree with having a funding button there, it's similar to what we have in other, or oh, it's exactly the same here in metrics. We have the sponsor button and it links out to our community bridge. Mm. And then you can go here and donate money. I'll vote for that. So Samantha, thank you for all of your work and joining us and answering questions. Uh, you're welcome to stick around if you want, but I understand also that you have an actual job. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I can stick around, absolutely, yeah. It's a Friday, I don't mind. <laughs> Is that okay? Yes, you're welcome to stick around. Because if I'm being entirely honest, um, and this may not be the forum to say this, but if I'm being entirely honest, I definitely want to be more involved um, as far as community for chaos goes. Um, this is just awesome. I love what you do, so. Oh, thank you. We are happy to have you be part of the community. So, uh, Vinod, you had asked how to add a metric. Yep. Like we uh, brainstormed it on a Google Doc, like created everything on the Google Doc. So, do I have to like create a issue and create a pull request for that or? Yes. Do we not have this already? No, we do not. We Probably. do not. Yep. Yeah. So what I recommend doing is uh, adding a um, adding here under living wage, the markdown right. file, right. linking to the markdown file from here, okay. and then add in the markdown file the actual metric. Okay. Just like what we did right. with the social currency metric system. Okay. Okay, I'll do it uh, like uh, after the meeting and I'll create a pull request for that. Yeah. Um, and while we are on the subject of metrics and how to include them, we have a spreadsheet that we should update. We have in here ecosystem social currency metric system that is ready for release. So that is purple. Our first metric is ready for the next release, everyone. We should celebrate. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm getting a drink tonight. <laughs> uh, I'm getting a drink after this call because I'm going to go out and have lunch with friends. And I basically call it a weekend, half day. OK, so then job opportunities, almost ready. We know you're opening the poll request yeah. and yeah. then we can review the pull request and um, include it in the next release. Yep, I'll do that. Okay. Perfect. So Andy, I have a question for you. I'm gonna put you on the spot because you have some action items here. 
Yes. Um, action item. Did you track down all the existing metrics, see if they match the new template? No, I have not. So put that, put that down for the next period. How about we do it right now? Sounds good. Okay. Because there's nothing wrong in having a good old fashioned working session. <laughs> um, let's see. We released labor investment, this metric, right? Yes, community metrics. Let's see which ones did we release before. I guess this table can tell us labor investment. So labor investment has the title, description, objectives, implementation, filters, visualizations, resources tool providing the metric. I think we should remove this heading. Um, unless we have a tool that already implements this. You agree? That's fine to me. Okay, we move on to heading. This so then uh, feel free to merge that pull request and then I'll mark this ready for release. Does that mean two metrics completed for release in one day? Yes. Clearly, that means two drinks. Oh, if you're going that route, be prepared. I'm planning more. <laughs> OK. Two drinks it is. Let's see if we can make it three. Project velocity is the other one. Has the title question description, objectives, implementation details, filters, visualizations, tools providing the metric, and resources. Looks ready to me. What do you think? Template fits. No work needed. I think Matt already put in the work. I just take silences, yes. And so then we have one more, and that is organizational project still demand. Okay. Oh, it's right here. It has a title, question, description, formula. Oof. I think formula should go in the implementation part. No. Okay, this one needs to work. This one is still the old template. Objectives and then So the base metrics include number of books, and we have only to put the template. Yes, of course, I don't link to the template. Yes, I do. Implementation, filters, visualizations. This one is tools 
providing that metric. Examples. Um, I don't, I would remove the examples here. I don't think they're actually helping describe the metric. Any objections? Then I'm removing examples here. And done. We have visualizations with four S. And I think this puts it into our new template. Okay, we have a pull request. Once we get that merged, we have four metrics ready for the next release. Thank you, Andy. And then we notice adding job opportunities. Yep. The process has five. Yeah. And we are well on our way to being awesome. No, we already are awesome. I, I take that down. <laughs> Okay, metrics work. They're complete. Andy, I have another action item from you. Um, about implementation, uh, simple example of the labor investment metric. Yes, which I'm very happy to do, but um, I cannot seem to get um, access to that auger uh, system. <laughs> so without that, I can't, I can't uh, do the implementation. Okay. Um, do you want to do it against the green map system? That'd be awesome. Yes, that'd be just fine. Uh, so if there's a, if there's a green system out there that, um, that, you know, I can access programmatically, uh, over the net, that'd be killer. So we do have this um, installation here for the Chaos project, which we can use for prototyping. And if it breaks, it breaks. It's yep. a community dashboard. Yeah. And we do have a process for you to get access if you don't have it yet. Okay, so that'd be great. When we go to participate, on our website. Do, 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 do. There is a section on the community dashboard. And then to request access, please open an issue and include your key base name to allow secure transmission of the login information. Okay, uh, so I have to set a key base. Oh, you don't have key base. No. Okay. Is that an obstacle? Yeah, you know, it's kind of, it's a hassle, but uh, I'll go ahead and I'll set it up. <clears throat> okay. Let me know when you have it, then I can befriend you on Cubase. They're also doing a, a giveaway. They're giving away some, um, some cryptocurrency and every month you get so sure, at least this cryptocurrency, if you are a key base participant. Uh huh. Uh, I'll be fine without the crypto. That's okay. Here, space drop. That's the box that does it. I've been reading the last couple of days that there's there's talk that um, like this the SHA two fifty six and SHA five twelve are compromised. That would mm -hmm. be quite an issue if that's true for the mm -hmm. crypto folks. Okay. So the other approach that we can take is um, what data did you want to use for this prototype? 
Well, you know, um, Georg, uh, I am quite certain that um, uh, that Greenmore is going to have raw data for us to use. That's for sure. I mean, you know, there's there's issue data. There's just all kinds of stuff, and I can also um, find libraries to you know to query and pull data against um, against uh, Elasticsearch. Uh, so what I'm planning on doing is just writing a very simple little UI that that you know would go into Elasticsearch, yank out some JSON or some CSV, whatever you know, whatever it gives, uh, and then allow you to enter in, for example, your labor rate and let it calculate for you, you know, for example, you know, a, a total. Uh, dollar cost of closing an issue or total dollar cost cost of a, a request th things of that nature so just very simple yeah that's that's what i'd like to do so, and I, I could do it against greenmore just fine okay so one of the nice things here if you go to the dashboard and you want to figure out how to query the data it actually tells you how to do it so let's say you want to do it by repository, like this visualization, you want to have exactly this data right here. Well, for one, you can just download the raw data, right? It gives you a CSV file, and then yeah. you plug that into your tool. But if right. you want to automatically update it, you can click this button here at the bottom and then change the view to request. Oh wait, we don't see, we see the wrong screen. Yeah, I'm looking at um, something about Stellar. Looks like you got 50 bucks, hey, that's, uh, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah, okay, so now we are on here. Okay, yeah. So let's say you want to get Git data. You go to the Git overview. Right. And let's say you want to do the analysis by repository, just like right. it is here. You want to use the number of commits, the number of added lines and new lines, whatever. For one, you can download the raw data as a CSV file. Yeah. So that way you don't even need an uh, integration. You just say, here's the CSV file. Okay, there's, so there's gonna be a URL for that, right? Um, I assume it's Can you do like show link on that, on that raw download? Um, I, I don't know, maybe not. Let's see, is there a... Yeah, well, it's, so there's gotta be just a URL. So I ought to be able to just get to, get to that. Uh... So that's possible. Okay. The other thing I wanted to show you is it tells you exactly how to query the um, database. So here at the bottom, you have this um, little button that shows up if you hover over it. And then you get the option at the top to see the request that is powering this data. And this request is a JSON file that you send to the Elasticsearch database. And it tells it what it wants, what you want. And then what it gives you in return is a JSON that has all the data in here. Right. So if you want to prototype with just the JSON file as an input without actually querying the database yet, you could just use this JSON object. I think I'm going to do exactly that. That is awesome. Let's have and then here. once you have the user interface, we can work on that database integration later. Yeah. As a second phase. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think collecting the data is just a matter of connecting to the database. The real value of this prototyping is to show what a parametric metric could look like. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, so here I am. I've got this page open. Yeah, I'll stop sharing. You can share your screen if you want us to look okay. over your shoulder. That'd be, that'd be great. Um, let's see what we got here. Share. And 
see, I guess we'll just share this browser. Share screen. Okay, that's great. Okay, let's bring up this URL. Can you see this? Yes. Okay, so let's see. Well, I can see the meeting minutes. Oh. Sorry about that. can figure out how to get at this URL. It looks like a JavaScript, chunk of JavaScript, view page source, inspect. Oh, save as. No. Uh. Export. Okay, so just downloaded. Do you see this an idea? Um, when you app you download it, um, does the browser tell you what your LED downloaded from? Uh, that's a good question. So in Firefox, I know I can copy download link. Mm -hmm. Let's, Let's, see, if, it. Let's see if I can get this in Firefox. Okay. Let's see. Um, save file. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Show all downloads. Does it show me the URL? Go to copy the download link. Look at that. So I don't actually see that window. I'm still yeah. on the dashboard. Score. Let's see what happens. Uh-oh. Not good. So maybe that's a really a temporary. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, maybe so. Let's see. Copy download link. Okay, I guess this is uh, confirmation. Nope, not working. Okay, so um, I guess I'm going to need that um, uh, that database access. So uh, I'll get that through Keybase. Yeah, and you. You saw how easy it is to get a query that gives you the data here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can use the dashboard to prototype what data you want, and then it gives you exactly the query. Right, right, exactly, yeah. OK. Yeah. OK, good. Excellent. Well, I look forward to that prototype. Um, if you want to have a session where we work on it together. We can also put that on the schedule for maybe next week or so. Oh, Georg, I may want to do that. So thank you for the offer. Um, I'll have a look at it over the weekend. And if I run into a roadblock, I'll send you an email. OK. I'm not the expert on this. I am just sometimes have ideas. <laughs> so, OK. Well, no, no better way to become the expert than uh, to be the teacher. Yeah, accessing the database is something that I wanted to play with anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in doing that together. OK. All right. Cool. That would be great. Thank you. Have good. a good weekend, everyone, uh, unless you have anything else. We have one minute left. Be good. Have a nice weekend. Can I just say to okay. all of you, y'all are the best. Thank you so much. And I really, really appreciate having worked with you. And I hope you don't mind if I continue to come to me. You're very welcome you to continue joining us. We are always looking for everybody there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially if they tell us we're the best. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs>
Right. Um, the other meeting that might be interesting if you want, are interested in chaos as a whole, because we are here in just the value working group. On Tuesdays, we have a community call that is where we pull everything together and get the updates and talk about the whole of chaos. Um, so, what time is that on Tuesday? Let's see. On the we have a participate page on the website with all of our times and everything. Oops, that was not the link I wanted to share. That is still not. Why is it not copying the URL? There, now it works. So the community call is at 11 a.m. Central Time on Tuesdays. Oh, so it's the same as this time, except on Tuesdays instead. Yes, correct. Okay, so I'll just work until 7 on those days. Um, Tuesdays and um, join you then because this is just basically a working meeting to take care of metrics that are existing, right? This is the call where we take care of the value metrics, like the social currency metric system we just uh, accepted today or the labor cost or uh, job opportunities, but then chaos as a whole has risk metrics, has diversity and inclusion metrics, has evolution metric, common metrics. So these are all different working groups that have their own time where they meet and do work. And then this call on uh, Tuesdays is where we report out, where we get together and uh, talk about the big picture. Okay, cool. Yes, yes, I'm excited, yes. <laughs> all right. Um, don't want to hold you up. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me and um, for this meeting. I appreciate it. Yep. Have a good weekend. Thank you. You too. Bye. Have a good weekend, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.